Hi guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this parcel I bought on eBay. Now, I brought this parcel um, purely to fix up some of those iPhone 4 logic boards that I checked out last week. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check out that video. Link will be down in the description, um, so you can sort of get a bit of a background on what I'm talking about in this video. Okay, so I picked these up quite cheaply on eBay. Now, these are just heaps and heaps of iPhone parts. And the reason I bought a um, heap of them rather than just a couple of locked phones is because I got these quite, uh, really cheap. So a locked phone might cost you 35 or something dollars and I got this for not much more than that. So basically it was a very good deal. Um, it's got heaps of screens and heaps of parts and all that kind of stuff which we're going to be taking a look at here. Um, and we're going to then be testing out some phones from last week's video and a couple of the phones that were included in this deal as well. So you can see here we've got an iPhone 4 and you can see it says it works. Um, we also have some 4S parts, so we got, uh, it looks to be a volume uh, control uh, for the 4S, and then heaps and heaps and heaps of dock connectors. Um, these are all for the iPhone 4S, uh, and there's none there for the iPhone 4. They do look slightly different. Um, you can plug them into the iPhone 4s, but um, the cabling actually sticks out the side, so you wouldn't be able to put the back uh, cover on if you were to install one of these in an iPhone 4. We've got a little bit of a testing um, equipment there where you basically plug in to uh, the logic board and then you can test out a heap of screens without uh, risking damaging the connector um, if you're continuously unplugging and plugging things in. Uh, the next thing we have here is another iPhone 4 logic board. This doesn't have anything written on it, so that is in unknown condition. And here's another iPhone 4 logic board, also in unknown condition, which we'll be testing out later on. Um, we've got a couple more dock connectors here, and we've got a couple of screens here. This is a white uh, iPhone screen. This is not a genuine Apple screen. Um, the white is slightly off from the normal ones. We've also got a green screen and um, a white iPhone 4S um, back glass, and that home button for the, that iPhone 4 LCD. Um, here we have a water-damaged iPhone 4S. Um, I did try and get this to power on, which was unsuccessful. Um, we've also got this iPhone 4S that has no display, we're also going to be taking a look at that, seeing if um, anything's up with that. Okay, so in the other container here, these are VHS um, containers if you know what they are, um, you can see those parts are from the water damaged iPhone 4S, that's why they're all rusty. Um, we've got a bag of iPhone 4 parts there, we've got an iPhone 4 housing um, with no power button. Um, but it does come with the dock connector. has come in contact with water at some stage, as you can see by the red indicator on the dock connector. The next one we're going to be taking a look at here is also an iPhone 4 housing. You can see the screen is cracked, um, but it is roughly intact. It's got um, a few SIM card trays laying in there as well. So we're going to be testing out some phones with that housing. We've also got heaps and heaps and heaps of iPhone screws. These are complete sets of screws for the phones, which is great um, for when I assemble some phones. Right here is the housing for the water damaged iPhone 4S logic board. You can see here that it's quite badly water damaged, so it looks like it's been underwater for quite some time or something like that. Um, we also get a heap of iPhone batteries. Now I can confirm the iPhone 5S battery, um, which was like randomly in there, doesn't work, it doesn't charge at all, um, so I ended up throwing that out. But the iPhone 4 and 4S batteries in there work just fine. Um, in this bag, we've got an iPhone 4 rear glass, which is cracked. Um, the next one to pull out here is also an iPhone 4 rear glass, and it's also cracked. Um, then we're going to be taking a look at a 4S rear glass, um, which is not, uh, which is slightly cracked. Then we've got some screens here. We've got uh, this one, which is from an iPhone 4S. It is not a genuine Apple screen. It's a replacement of some kind. Um, then we've got two more screens here. These are both genuine Apple screens, um, which is great. Um, they do have minor cracks, uh, but nothing too bad. They're good test screens or to put on some phones, um, as they're not too badly cracked. This one is also cracked up in the corner. Um, and I'm pretty sure that one's a genuine Apple screen, um, but don't quote me on that. This one here is also a genuine Apple screen with a slight crack down in the corner. That one will be going onto a phone at some stage, hopefully. Um, and we've got some more screens in there as well. 
Also in this bag are a heap of iPhone 3G and 3GS parts. So we've got some dock connectors. Um, and we've also got some um, micro soldering parts as well. Uh, I think we've got a backlight coil, coil and things in there for the iPhone 4 and I think also the 4S. Um, but I don't know how to micro solder, so I won't be able to, uh, to put those on. Um, but I might uh, learn how to do that one day. But basically in here we've got an iPhone, iPhone 3G or 3GS digitizer, um, which is genuine Apple. And then you've got these two glass panels. Um, I don't have any use for those because they don't have the digitizer on them. So they're basically just rubbish. Um, and in here we also have a complete sort of assembly of the uh, touchscreen for the iPhone 3G or 3GS. I'm not sure on which phone exactly as they look pretty similar but you can see here that it does have the screen on there, it's not cracked, as the home button and all the proximity sensor and earpiece and things like that. We've also got some cases here, we've got um, some big clear case, we've also got some cases that look like um, the back of the phone um, in red and uh, in black. There's also this logic board here which is water damaged which we'll be testing out later in this video. So as you can see here, I've gotten a lot of iPhone parts. Um, which I'm going to be putting to use uh, in many different phones and things like that. So the first logic board we're going to be testing out here um, is one of the ones that we got with parts that we just uh, took out. And I'm also going to be testing one of the screens from those uh, parts as well. As you can see, it doesn't power on or do anything. So this one has had some kind of damage. The plugging it into iTunes, you can see that it does show up and it is running iOS 6.1.3 and it's a 16 gigabyte white iPhone. So I'm pretty sure this one's had long screw damage, so someone's put the wrong screw in and uh, damaged the um, some trace on the logic board and that's why the display isn't uh, working anymore. So that one's uh, a no-go, but this one here is running iOS 7.0.4. Um, Usually on a clean install of iOS, in the hello screen, there'll be a little eye in the corner which will tell you your IMEI. That is not here on this phone, so I wasn't sure exactly why that was, but I did notice that straight away as soon as I turned the phone on. Um, I plugged it into iTunes and basically it said, there is a problem with your iPhone. And I've never seen that before, so I've no, got no idea really what that is. I put that up on Twitter. A couple of people said that it might be a baseband issue. Um, so I'll have to look into that a little bit more, but for now that phone is also not working. So taking out the one that says works, um, we're going to be testing that out. So here I did put this phone into a housing and plug it into iTunes again, but it also did the same thing saying there is a problem with this iPhone. You can see there iOS 7.0.4, go ahead and slide to power off. And we can go ahead and test out this one that says works on it and um, see what's up with that. So I've just got to disassemble the uh, phone and put in the new logic board here, which we're going to be testing out trying to get it uh, seated correctly, connect all the cables and the battery and powering up. Okay, so this phone is running iOS 7, as you can see here by the background and the Apple logo at the start. Um, now it is running I an older version of iOS 7, so if we go ahead and go into settings and in general, then about, we can go ahead and see that this is a 32 gigabyte iPhone and it is running iOS 7.1. Now, we're going to be also checking to make sure that it is iCloud unlocked. So if I go in and check down in the iCloud section, you can see that it is unlocked from iCloud. Now, this phone is fully functional other than the fact that it doesn't have any call sound. I did test that out off camera and I wasn't able to get any call sound. Um, so this is one of the iPhone um, logic boards from last week. It's running iOS 6. This is the one that has no sound written on it. And um, basically, I plugged it in and uh, confirmed that it doesn't have any sound. Okay, so when you're in a call, um, they can't hear you and you can't hear them. So it's just pretty much a dead call. Um, so I basically am going to try and fix this by putting in a piece of um, card right on top of the audio chip. I heard online that this does fix um, the audio issues, or supposedly does. So we're going to be testing this out. So if I just take it out here. and remove this shield up in the top. We can go ahead and see the A4 chip there. And in that corner is the is the audio chip. So looking there, you can see it there. 
And we're just gonna go ahead and put something on top of that just to um, apply pressure and see if that makes any difference to the call sound. So putting it on here, we can reinstall the shield and put the phone back together. Okay, so back on the phone, you can see here, um, I've had to blur out the number, but basically it did absolutely nothing. It made no difference whatsoever. Now if I go ahead and install this phone here, this is also running iOS 6 um, from last week. Now, this is the one that was basically running a clean install of um, iOS 6.1.3 and it was fully functional to my knowledge. So I'm gonna be testing it out in this video to see if there's any call sound issues like the last phone. If you watched last week's video, this is the one that says buzzing sound on it. So go ahead and take a listen to a phone call I made to my friend. James can't hear me right now, but basically all he can hear is what I'm hearing now. As you can see there, this thing sounds nuts. So we're going to be ta taking a look here, we're going to be playing some music. Um, this is the same track that's playing in the background of this YouTube video. So just take a listen and see what you think. Okay, so you can see there with the sound um, during calls and also basically throughout the device, the sound seems very distorted and even through the headphone jack it is also distorted. It was harder to tell as it was going through my amplifier, but basically there's something seriously wrong with the sound chip and needs to be replaced. Now I don't know how to micro solder, but I may look into doing it um, at some stage. So if I learn how to do it and get some tools, I'll make a video on that. But for now, this phone is currently not working. So the next one we're going to be taking a look at here is the one that looks like it says cooked screen. Um, I can't really understand what it says, but basically from last week it was on the setup screen um, and basically I erased it because it had an iCloud account in it. So it was sort of on the iOS 7 setup screen. Um, so basically that didn't work, putting it in a housing, it just would not activate it. I was getting an activation error. So basically that phone isn't working now for some reason. It was like literally working. Um, I set it up and basically added an iCloud account in it, but because it had never connected to the internet, it wasn't activation locked. So I erased it to then go to set it up, but now it won't set up. So I'm not sure what's up with that. I might have to um, call Apple or see what they say about that, um, that error. But basically, we're going to be changing the screen on this um, housing to make one complete iPhone for the fully functional iPhone 4 32 gigabyte logic board from last week. If I go ahead and install the new screen here, you can see that there's no cracks or anything on it. I'm gonna steal the dock connector from the other housing that I got with this uh, lot of parts um, and put that in here. And we're going to then reassemble the phone and get a working 32 gigabyte iPhone 4. here we can then go ahead and power up the phone and you can see here that the phone is working now if I go ahead and open up settings here and the about section you can see here that the phone is running iOS 7.1.2 and it is a 32 gigabyte now I can confirm this phone works 
fully with sound calls, audio and everything like that. Now I do need to put a new back on this. Um, that was just one of the backs from those iPhone parts I got. So I'm just putting that on there for now to cover up the insides of the phone. That iPhone 3G logic board that was in those parts, I went ahead and plugged that into iTunes with no screen or battery or anything like that, and it shows up in iTunes and basically thinks it's an iPhone first generation and wants to install the iOS 3.1.3 software update. So I'm not sure what's up with that, and because I don't have a screen or a battery or anything, um, I'm not going to be restoring it or doing anything with it, as it's currently in DFU mode. So I may look into getting some parts for an iPhone 3G or 3GS once I find out exactly what model it is, then maybe try and fix it up and see exactly what's up with that. But basically, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and make sure to check out the iPhone playlist for more videos just like this one, and I'll catch you guys next time, another one of my great videos.